<laughs> so, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Marco Casali, I'm a postdoc uh, here at Lucia Levin. I work with Charles Spence. And um, 40 minutes is fine, or is so much? Oh, yeah, no, and you have an hour. To... You have up to an hour, so you can go ah. nice and slow. No, 40 minutes uh, is, is enough. <laughs> Um, so, the title of my presentation, uh, can, I, can you see all the, uh, here? Okay. the title of my presentation is Biological Possibility, Can Chance Show Us the Way? So, um, what is, is this presentation about? This presentation is about stochasticity and possibility in biological practice. So, first of all, I will try to to propose you that through the study of uh, the notion of stochasticity, we can try to figure out what kind of possibility we can have in uh, some bi biological domain. And my main point will be on development, but we will see something concerning uh, evolution too. The second uh, is making more explicit the different kind of possibility between development and evolution. In order to do that, I will propose two scenarios uh, to try to explore uh, the notion of biological possibility that are concerning development. I will try to convince you that stochastic development could be a useful scenario from the start from. And uh, from evolution, the scenario already sketched by John Beatty, uh, other uh, researcher, that is historical contingent. So these two scenarios for me, I would like to convince you that they can help us to study and uh, say something more concerning biological possibility. The third is a, more, a broader reflection on development and uh, evolution as a science. So not as a phenomenon, but as a science. So this is a work in progress project. So this really uh, all feedback will be very welcome. So stochasticity. We have a different definition of stochasticity. For example, given a, set, given a fixed set of initial condition of a T and different processes and outcomes are possible. This is the definition used by, uh, for example, Mistake, but in general in philosophy of biology, in philosophy of evolu evolu evolutionary biology, it's very well used. But we can find this kind of definition also in a biological literature, in which Simon and Ray give a very similar characterization of what could be stochastic. Um, and this is the uh, figure from, from the biological paper in which we can see very clearly here that starting from the same as even initial condition, we can have different results. And this is the uh, stochastic. Uh, um, the structure of the notion of stochasticity proposed by this author. But today, and this is the, my, my suggestion, is to focus on possibility and where we can find possibility here are the arrows. So the arrows are the possible way in which, from the starting point, we can have a different result. Okay? And um, so Suarez uh, proposed a very interesting work concerning statistical modeling, in which he tr really um, argued about the fact that chance can be defined only in biological practice. And he proposed in statistical modeling three moments in which chance can have different uh, meaning and he decomposed the concept in propensities, probabilities, and frequencies. And this is very interesting for, for me because the idea is that chance is not so monosemantic but should be interpreted differently depending on the moment of modeling that we are looking at. The difference uh, with my project is that I would like to provide an analysis of possibility, but maybe the relation between chance and possibility and chance with this other concept is not of the same kind because possibility is related to chance but not is not one of its uh, realization or you know one way in which chance could be described. It's more kind of relation than uh, an, an identity. And so 
I really would like to use uh, the definition of stochasticity that we can find in logical practice to say something concerning the logical possibility. So the plan. First of all, I give you some insight concerning the literature in biological possibility. After that, I will develop these two scenarios concerning uh, contingent evolution, historical contingency, and stochastic development. After that, I will give some what I think could be some epistemic gain concerning the, the advantage in developing this, this scenario, and some open questions. So, let's start. There are two main lines of philosophical discussion about biological possibility. The first one was uh, the work by Dennett in 1995 of genetic possibility. What is possible for a given existing genome? And X is a biological possible if uh, and only if X is an instantiation of an inaccessible genome or a feature of its phenotypic products. So we have kind of an actual uh, DNA, we have a possible, um, so uh, an actual genome, we have a possible genome and accessibility depend of the point mutation. But some critics have been raised for this kind of work because there are some critics concerning what precisely accessibility means and how we can measure it. But in general, this work, we can, we can conceive this work as a theoretical reflection on one type of evolutionary possibility, namely the genetic one. The second wave of study, that is more recent, um, try to approach biological possibility in biological practice, uh, namely analyzing uh, synthetic biology. Because synthetic biology uh, expand the logical possibility beyond the theoretical framework of genetic possibility. And some question that synthetic biologists uh, can do is what possibilities emerge when we bypass this restrictive field of evolution, for example, of it's possible to have a molecule that do the same function of DNA, but nonetheless it's a different uh, molecules, or is it possible to scratch a gem on, uh, genetic circuit from scratch. So the very interesting thing concerning uh, synthetic biology, even if uh, it's a very young um, domain and is very interdisciplinary domain, is that we can test it. Sometimes synthetic biology can test the question concerning this possibility, even if the answers are not um, conclusive, they can be incomplete. So, and the philosophical interest on, on it, for example, this paper, mm, is to uh, analyze the methodology of, of this, uh, of, in, in biological practice. For example, uh, E.S. Konskinen uh, proposed to analyze the rational design that some synthetic biology used, for example, the bottom-up construction of genetic circuit, or, for example, directed evolution, it's a specific kind of artificial selection, in order to try to say something concerning the unactualized possibility, the unactualized possibility in a natural world. And this unactualized possibility can be, uh, it's possible to make them uh, possible overcoming weak selection, lack of environmental variation in history. And um, so the first lesson that we can, uh, that this liter these two kind of literature can give us is that there is a uh, theoretical speculation versus biological practice approach on biological possibility. And then let's stick to the theoretical concept, concept that are difficult to explain. So I'm more uh, on the biological practice part in order to propose an analysis on biological possibility. And a fil rouge that we can find this new wave of study, but also in one dissertation by Zinzel in 2007, in which, uh, as we argued before, the philosophical analysis is not to be 
has not to be very descriptive, in this case showing where biology says something concerning possibility. So kind of pointing out to, ah, here the biologists talk about possibility, also here what are the meaning, etc. But there is something more to say. And uh, this, this new wave of study tried to, to say that the philosophical analysis is to dig deeper into the model method that some um, model of possibility claim biology do can um, encompass. And there are different kind of modality from which the model message must be extracted. This is the, the, the very the interesting message that we have to keep in mind. So, for example, Koskinen emphasizes the need to explore the contrastive relational nature of modena, model modeling, we can say more broadly, reasoning strategies. For example, this uh, could be an example in which is supersonic eyes, this is a specific um, phase of, of, uh, of water, of ice, at high temperature and pressures, possible? This is the question. But there is something more than the answer to this question, because this specific question concerning possibility could have some consequence if we contrast this possibility uh, a question with a more broad, broad uh, face space of water. Because if we ask this, we can see something concerning necessity, namely the fact that low temperature is not necessary for the formation of ice water. So the really the general message uh, of Koskin and say that the possibility claim, the possibility question could be contrasted or related to a broader scenario. And this is interesting for a philosophical point of view. For example, if XNA uh, is possible, XNA is uh, another molecule that is different from the DNA <coughs> but can have the same function. And the interesting stuff is not only if XNA is possible, but what is the relation with the DNA? Because if XNA is possible, then the DNA is contingent. And this is a very, this can have some important consequence in the, um, in the scenario. So, a third lesson that I would like to propose concerning these two kinds of literature, genetic possibility and synthetic biology, is that our literature, even if this one is Focalize on synthetic on synthetic biology then on biological practice are two kind of study that focalize the possibility on evolutionary scenario. So this is an important point. So we discuss a bit concerning this literature that is not a huge literature, but nonetheless we do have this kind of studies concerning evolution. And my question, this is my my, my, my statement, my curiosity, we can say, because we have evolution, development, so these two big topics in, uh, in biology. So what about development? Um, isn't there anything interesting to say about developmental possibilities? Maybe, yeah, could be the case. Or we can say something more about the possibility in development. At, uh, specifically, what I'm interested on is the physiological level at which the organism grows and matures. And my question is, what kind of possibilities are developmental possibilities? But which kind? Uh, I don't want to enter in the, the in metaphysics. I will. I will. I will show you in a moment. In what sense they can be different from the evolutionary one? And as I said, the case study, I don't, I don't want to, pro to provide uh, or propose a general reflection and exploration of uh, developmental possibility. But the key access will be through the notion of stochasticity that we found in developmental practice, like in model description and explanation. And uh, again, the proposal is to say that stochasticity, as we find in biological practice, can be useful to highlight something concerning this. Developmental possibility. So now, second part. 
I call this second part an interlude because I now let us present a contingent evolutionary scenario proposed by BT that will be used to develop our scenario concerning the development. So, BT. Um, BT provide a very sophisticated, BT and the other scholars, Dejardin, etc., a very sophisticated um, scenario. Uh, but the statement is that they would like to provide um, an argument uh, echoing Stephen Jay Gould and say that evolution is contingent. If we let's try to summarize the scenario that they or he proposed with a slogan, and the slogan is what happened could have been otherwise. And this is the branding process that they use a lot. And one interesting thing among other of their scenario, BT specifically, is saying that, okay, we have this part. So if we arrive here from A through B1 and we arrive to 2, we have an actual situation. But what interests BT to underline is that here we have an actualized possibility. And this actualized possibility for BT are something that can be explanatory. This is the one of interesting point. BT suggests that unactualized but real possibilities play a key role in explanation. So here, real, I think, could have very interesting metaphysical um, mm, analysis of consequences, but BT really tried to avoid this discussion. Why key role in explanation? Because possibility that have been actualized can also, and above all, be understood through those that haven't. And, uh, and the situation is to tell what happened in the cause and what did not, is to tell why it happened. Theory, as a, the, the paper history and contingency, has uh, flipping the argument around, saying that we can explain why something didn't happen with what uh, actually happened. But a bit interesting, uh, say, the other way around. And I think it's, it's, it's very... Um, so, my interpretation of this scenario is to, pro pro to propose, and uh, it's a work in progress. I think that here we can... Uh, it's reasonable to see a contrafactual reasoning. Because there is a false premise. What would happen if Picaglia hadn't survived? Picaglia is a, is a, um, a coordinate from which all other vertebrates follow and also us. So, what would happen if Picaglia hadn't survived, but the Picaglia didn't die out? So, the premise is false. And, uh, and I think, uh, this is my, 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 my proposal, is that the current situation is contrasted with an actualized but real possibility. And this is, I think, interesting because it's the model method that, that we could carry out from this scenario. Um, and then I propose that the model message here is contrastive in nature. And here we... Um, uh, and it's really work in progress because my intuition is that here we can also say something more concerning the kind of possibility than this scenario understood as not as reality but as model as kind of an explanation they are unactualizable and unactualized possibility I know that it's hard to, uh, to, to yes, yeah, it's, 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 it's not clear in my mind what kind could be referred to, but let's go ahead. Because the, the Bikai are the reason we came to human evolution. But the fact that they might be as well not have survived gives us something more. The fact that Bikai are turning point, this is the BT technical um, term, Encapsulate the idea of contingency, both in terms of contingency per se and contingency point. What does it mean? It means that here, that Kikaya survived, but it could have been otherwise, is an element contingent per se. Because 
happened but would have been otherwise. And what follows is contingent upon because, because it depends on the contingent per se phenomenon. And this is interesting because this scenario gives a very important role to an actualized possibility. Um, so, contrafactual reasoning, unactualizable and actualized possibility, modal message, contrasting. This is my um, interpretation of the BT scenario. From here, so end of the interlude, but in short, what we can say about development. So this is uh, the more interesting part for, for us. So let's try to, to sketch something. For the rest of presentation, I will try to convince you that a good way to see a scenario of development that we call stochastic development is made of conditional reasoning, actualizable possibility, and a relational modal message. But let's start from the beginning. Is development stochastic? Or are the narrative in developmental biology description, explanation, model, uh, stochastic? There are uh, a lot of papers concerning the development and the stochastic aspect of development. Uh, very interesting, uh, the stochastic aspect of development is perceived mostly uh, by um, plant biologists because the development in, uh, in plant uh, is more accessible concerning the study of its stochastic nature. So the question is not whether the development is stochastic process, but rather to what extent stochasticity is important and what role it plays. So, and the method that the methodology that they use are mostly the, the main uh, the main methodology are the first if compare experimental result with some calculation model of computational model. If if they match, we can say that this process can be seen as stochastic. And the second, in the experimental test, two um, biological system that very uh, are the same, and the differences can be considered as stochastic variation. This is a very well known study of Elowitz, noise engine expression, etc. So this is the methodology. And for example, to be more specific, there are some papers in which they write that microtubules play a critical role in cell division, proliferation, and morphogenesis. Microtubules are kind of a skeleton of cells. And for example, stochastic transition between growth and disassembly of individual microtubules are critical for the formation of ordered cortical microtubule arrays, etc. So they give a very important um, role of stochasticity. Or even more, stochasticity itself is used to explain the robustness of some processes because stochasticity is characterized as a useful source of variation. Of course, to be honest, there are a lot of research that has to be done concerning the stochasticity in development because sometimes the question is that maybe it's only because we don't know what's happening. But nonetheless, there are strong statements in the logical literature concerning stochasticity. So we get summing up, say that development is stochastic process in the sense that the description of some stage implies a more or less explicit reference <coughs> to stochasticity. So going back to our scenario, done stochastic development. Now, if we would like to uh, to summing up in a slogan our scenario, we can say that what happens can be different. I will try to explain what I mean with this. And so, stochastic development. There are a lot of study concerning development and a lot of mathematization of the epigenetic landscape by Waddington. I will uh, show you in a moment. And there are really uh, some other, like one, that I say, the epigenetic landscape by Waddington is not only a metaphor. It's is something that we can formalize and we can mathematize. And there's a lot of work on this, in, for example, in stem cell uh, research. But for, from today, 
you can really stick on the metaphor because it's more it's easier. And the visionary landscape um, is, is this image in which the, the, the ball symbolizes the different stages cell which roll down the landscape. Okay? The valleys represent the attractors, the optional developmental part with the eels represent unstable state playing in the role of energy barrier, which constrain the territory of the ball. And this is a good scenario used by biology in order to formalize, to develop model of development. So, consider, um, consider for example, totipotent cell. Let's start from here and going ahead, we have a differentiation of, of that cell. And this, um, in this part, we, we have what BT, John BT called the chance in phases mandate. Namely, it's, 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 in a slogan it's saying that more the bow go, uh, goes on and there is a for a close possibility, more than for a possibility uh, close. Because, for example, also in history more generally, more the narrative go ahead, more we have a kind of for a close possibility. This is a, an argument also present in the philosophy of history. And uh, so this is a, a, um, a feature of development, so you can Chance the physical mandate, namely to fully close possibility as the narrative proceeds. And, uh, and this is interesting by, by BT because he said that the turning point that we already mentioned before in a narrative is perfectly compatible, entirely consistent with the fact that this turning point also fully close possibilities. Leaving, leaving very few end styles open at end. This means that an idea of contingency, the turning point, that of course um, open possibility, <coughs> but in a way also is a closing possibility. This is, I, don't, I don't have time to go deeper on this, um, this argument, but um, we have to keep in mind that development is also following this closing uh, stuff. And uh, all this scenario, Corsani stochasticity, this foreign closing possibility, developmental uh, epigenetic landscape, we have to keep in mind this scenario thinking about the fact that development is reproducible. And this will be the point. Because it's the lot of a species developed into a larva or a germinal of that species. And all the time, if we have an embryo of a chicken, we will uh, always have a chicken. And what I mean with reproducibility? Reproducibility can be conceived as the capacity of something, for example, a biological phenomenon, to be repeated, leading to the same or similar result. And developmental reproducibility is the capacity of development in for play to reproduce the same or similar other organisms of a given species, starting from zero of that species. Okay? So, development is reproducible. And let's consider developmental possibility in light of its reproducibility. And this is the main point. Let's try. What kind of possibility we are talking about? Um, so, this is my proposal, but uh, it's still weak, so please be strong in the, in the feedback. So, if in contingent scenario we have an actualized possibility, because it's a historical science, here I would like to propose that we, are, we have an actualizable possibility. Because since development is a repeatable process, we can keep um, reproduce this process and see that these possibilities are actualizable in different way, specifically concerning the turning point, the stochasticity. In a stochastic process, we have we can have the realization, the actualization of our possibility. What happened can be different 
And if we compare one one in one developmental process, we can have this possibility path, this or this. And this can happen stochastically, so the stochasticity has a very important role here. And the fact that we can compare these different possibilities because it's reproducible. So let's slow down and try to unravel this last part. I think that here we have a conditional reasoning that premise could be true. And the alternative possibility can be actualized. This is interesting, can be actualized. For example, here we have an embryo or cell embryo of mouse and that can uh, differentiate in two different cell inner cell mass or trophodactyl cell. And this differentiation depends on the concentration of some transcriptome function. And small perturbation can tilt the balance. And this is, I think, a stochastic event that is different from the definition that we gave at the beginning. It's, it's another, it's more like sensibility to relational conditions, so it's another definition of stochasticity. But nonetheless, it's only to say that we have kind of this stochastic scenario from which uh, different alternative and actualizable possibility uh, can be uh, seen. Um, so we have conditional reasoning, actualized, actualized and actualizable possibility. This is my proposal. And the novel message, this is the, my, uh, I don't know how this, I can recall, but I think that the novel message here could be considered relational. Why? Yeah, this is the, the weaker point. So, very slowly. For me, I know for for, for me that is hard, yeah. So, we can relate the actualization of these possibilities in different developmental processes to see, for example, how stochasticity open up heterogeneous possibility while restoring a robust process. The for a closing possibility that I was talking about. So in a in a figure, we can have this actualization possibility, this, this, we, we have all the time a uh, chicken, but this relation with this actualizable possibility is the modern message that I would like to underline because this, <coughs> this, the modern message is relational and this relational model message could be very useful for explanatory point of view because for example here we can say we can explore something more concerning the robustness of the process despite the stochasticity for example and despite the fact that we can have actualiza the actualization of different possibilities. I don't know if it's clear. Let's try to sum it up. I start from here and finish here, in which contrafactor versus conditional, unactualizable and actualized, actualizable, actualizable possibility, modal message, contrastive and relational. Okay. So, why you uh, develop this, why this could be interesting, um, metaphysics, so <laughs> try to figure out the reality of possibility. Um, not yet, I don't want to, uh, uh, I think it could be interesting, but now I'm not ready. So, the plan from today is only to uh, give some epistemic gains concerning the utility of developing these scenarios. So the first one uh, I already uh, is the one that uh, I just told you <coughs> concerning the fact that there is an explanatory power of actualizable possibility if we have in mind this scenario. In the light of the fact that we have this actualizable <coughs> repeatability of developmental uh, process. The model message is that uh, not only why we have this possibility, if this possibility is possible, but relate all the kind of possibility that we can have in different um, processes. 
So, this is summing up. The model method we can extrapolate from this type of possibility can be considered relational. We can link the actualization of this possibility in different developmental processes to see how stochasticity, for example, opens up actualizable possibility while returning a robust process. And in another paper, I work uh, uh, deeper concerning how development can be con both contingent and reproducible. So maybe you're thinking about uh, this um, work on possibility that I had in mind, also this work that I made just before. And uh, so I think all these um, uh, evolution, development, echoes, um, a very interesting debate in philosophy of science, maybe the historical, historical versus experimental science. For example, Cleveland, and this is uh, the second epistemic game that I would like to propose to you. So for example, Cleveland um, say, states that scientists <coughs> engage in two very different patterns of evidential reasoning. But, but thinking about possibility in the way I, I propose you today, um, it's important to, to see the model reasoning that we can find evolution development, but also in saying that maybe this way of reasoning is more complex and some mixing up uh, kind of reasoning could be uh, fine. For example, we said that contrafactual evolution and actualized and actualized possibility, and we can say that this is a scenario um, the, the science that could embrace this scenario is an historical science. Or that we are around in this order, we have experimental science. Fair enough. But I think there is a challenge here, saying that evolution could be also um, conditional and actualizable possibility. Why? Because we are the borderline cases, for example, the study by Lozos of lizard, but also the long-term experiment, in which, in a way, they manipulate evolution. So this is a borderline case in which I see how evolution, the, re the reasoning could be conditional and the possibility are actualizable. For example, they've worked by losses, we don't have to enter in detail, but we have different island and this different island is the premise is that they share the same environment. We have an ancestor and uh, in each island, uh, we have the same evolution of this ancestor. So one question by the is say, OK, but how evolution happens? Kind of one single process of evolution, and after that, there is a spread of this uh, actual species in all the island, or we have parallel evolution in a different island. This is a debate more related to the uh, dichotomy, the, the dichotomy between contingent and convergent evolution. But today, for us, it's important because losses can manipulate the scenario, can get lizard, measure the capacity, the phenotype, uh, get back to the etc. It's kind of a manipulative scenario in evolutionary term. And exactly, losses are interesting to say. Evolutionary biology is both an can be both experimental and historical science. And this mixing of reasoning can be useful for uh, mutually illuminating the study of biological diversity. And development? Development, as we said, is this scenario. The study of possibility and the way they are used in models, and more generally, the style of reasoning can more deeply help us to understand the nature of science and for 
development. Of course, we can have conditional reasoning, as we already uh, discussed. What happens can be different. And in that context, we can say, what would, what would we get if we did this? And this is uh, classic in experimental science. But we can, have, we can approach, also in controversial reasoning, we get a certain result, but if the initial condition had been different, what would the result have been? This is a reason that is more like historical science. And uh, I think this way of reasoning could be very interesting from development too. If we highlight the value of study development as a type, namely the particular mechanism present in the construction of a single individual organism. Because <coughs> development normally is studied in, in, the, in descriptive, descriptive embryology, we see type. The, there are different stages that are more or less shared by all the taxa, more or less, it's not, it's not true. But the other way around, the, the, the um, this is token. Fuck, this is token. Same thing as a token, because it used to um, be studied as a type. Okay, so I don't know if sorry, this is a little bit confusing. But it's token because usually developmental is studied as a type. And why is it interesting to study development as a, as a token? Because here, and this is part of the other, it's, it's, it's more appreciable the explanatory role of contingency, the explanatory role of the kind of possibility that we can find, etc. Um, so, I think Cleland uh, make a good point, Mar but we can think about this science as engaging to mix the style of reasoning. And to clarify this modern reason style, uh, I think that possibilities, the study of possibilities, are a good key. This is my, my, my point. So, open question. I finished. Huh? So, um, one of the questions for me is what about stochastic evolution? and contingent development is flipping the scenario around because we are already aware about the stochastic aspect of evolution. Of course, it would be interesting to, to focus, to analyze the possibility that this scenario can um, uh, imply. And at the same time, can the development be contingent? This is the flipping the argument around because I think that if you study development as a token, we can appreciate it more, the contingent natural of development. After that, we have to really define what I mean with stochasticity and development in specific scenario and research program. But in general, this is the suggestion. Um, and this is the question that I... Um, can the difference between possibilities stay different geological domains be formalized? If yes, what line of research should we pursue? So I'm looking for... Um, a more maybe technical, I don't know, formal tool to, to use in a, in a, I don't want to say only kind of possibility, I would like to, to be more precise, but I don't have yet an idea concerning that, so if you have it, please. So, thank you so much for the attention. Since you were ahead of schedule, we can definitely get away with a five minute break if people want a five minute break. More so, yes, more coffee. Back in a second.
all right, questions. Let me uh, let me check in the chat as well. Otherwise, you can field your own. <laughs> um, just a clarification question. If you could go back to the part where you presented the, the three chickens that resulted from the three chickens. Uh, I was not clear on what what is to be explained here and what is the explanation. If you could just yes. explain it. Yeah, yes, this is a the part of my argument that I still uh, that I still don't know how precisely organized, but the idea is that we have here the whole process of the development, okay? And mm, it's we know a lot concerning the development of organisms, but there are still a lot of stuff that, that we don't know. So. And one is the, the stochastic aspect. And uh, for, uh, so what we, for example, the important, I think that what the making explicit that we have here actualizable possibility can be explanatory because with this in mind, we can uh, go further concerning the understanding of the, the process because we can compare different process development in the laboratory or whatever and compare the different way which stochasticity enable to different possibilities to be actualized and maybe from this comparison something concerning the development as a token, in this case, could be elucidated. And sometimes they, they do that comparing the, if we have the possibility here or the other stuff. And one instantiation of this um, uh, kind of inquiry is, uh, is asking how we can get the chicken all the time, even if we have different possibility or there is stochasticity. They are aware about this, um, this different actualization of possibility and the fact that stochasticity enable to this, uh, this different uh, actualization <coughs> could be seen as an explanatory. So this is a philosophy, it's like bitty stuff. Uh, in there is an explanatory role of an actualized possibility and I think for a philosophical point of view, there is an explanatory role of actualizable possibility in development that could be also used by biologists in the laboratory. Maybe they do already this, but without having in mind the possibilities and model message because it's not their concern. But I think this way of framing it is useful for a philosophical point of view to add some meal to the to the biological possibility literature and for a biological point of view to, to settle the experimental practice that maybe is already like that in a new form for some possibility. I don't know, but I have to work on it hard. Yes. Yes. No, no, no. Yes, uh, another question on the free chickens picture. Chicken is. Uh, uh, what is represented by the ball? This is the ball organism, right? Yes, so this is a mix of eleven of actually true. This is yeah. the wall organism, this is a cell differentiation. This is cell differentiation. But if we. It's kind of. We uh, lump different. Uh, this is kind of. Because nonetheless, the development starts from cell differentiation. The gastrulation, the segmentation, the gastrulation start from, yeah, it's a rather scale, of course, but nonetheless, I think it does not bother the, the argument. I mean, I, I maybe should, I should um, 
Kia put uh, a module, I don't know, at different uh, developmental stages, but nonetheless, the, but the reasoning is yeah, so why not are related to this. Sorry? So why I'm asking this question is that if I understand the diagram right, then the dimension should represent the phenotypic diversity, yes. which means why the chicken are... They, are they supposed to be the same? Because we end up with the same chicken, or here actually we meant that there are different chickens which end up by different things, and or because one way to understand this will be something say something like this is a cell differentiation. So on the level of cell differentiation, we will see uh, that some cells go to the left, some cells go to the right, etc., etc., etc. A lot of statistics. But if we look at the animal tissue level, at the organ level, at the organism level, we will see the same chicken all the time. Which will mean that there will be no divergence on the level of See, yeah, uh, this is exactly the point. I mean, when, when I say robustness, yeah. I say robustness, for example, the chicken level. As possibility is interesting because focus on dactylized on possibility, again, give us some insight concerning the way in which, from a stochastic process that can actualize different possibilities, we have nonetheless the same. Uh, chicken. So, and but is it the same chicken? Is no. Or is it <laughs> a chicken? That's exactly. the point. Exactly. It's, a, it's a chicken as a... It's not an identical chicken. It's, is a, that it's a chicken. Is <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's variation in is robustness. Okay, yes. That's what your point this is. This is a, is a, is a token. Okay, token. Okay, 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 okay. Token. Okay. And the different tokens are already realized in laboratories or that they are actualizable but to actualize them. When we manipulate them, we create cellular divisions to yeah. actually get different chickens to see that. Yes. Statistically different possible de developers uh, end up by the same type of chicken. Yes. Okay. 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 Yes, please. Um, I have many questions, but I, I maybe I look at this too much from a logical point of view. From a so from a logical point of <laughs> ah, view. Logic. Ah, I mean, logic. Ah, biology, logic. <laughs> but there are many things that I'm surprised by, and so I will learn by your answers. It's not meant as criticism, but more as uh, questions for clarification. So. Um, Logically seen, like in the Kripke kind of uh, way of seeing modality, there is no big difference between this counterfactual aspect and uh, the, the future actualizability. It's just which world do you start from? Do you start from a world that is non, uh, uh, is, is, is not the real world, or do you start from the real world and look at what is there accessible? Yeah. But it's always about what is accessible yeah. or actualizable if you want from that point of view. Yeah. Whether you choose now or whether you choose a moment yeah, that yeah, actually true. did not occur. Yeah, thank you so the, the structure seems the same, it cannot make a difference from that point of view in terms of relational or constructive compressive or something. I mean I don't see how that can make like this big of a difference. Yes. Yes, thank you so much. This give me the possibility to um, make explicit one of my um, convention. But first of all, this is interesting if you can choose a scenario, okay, you can position yourself position yourself in in one point or another depending on your necessity and the, what you want to discuss about. But here and this is the asymmetry that I think we can, uh, I have to argue for. We talk about development and we talk about evolution. And implicitly, I, I make, I, in evolution, I'm at the end. Mm -hmm. Not the end of evolution, but right now. Mm -hmm. This is my position. Mm -hmm. Development, I can be all the time the starting point. And this different from the, 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 
because what, if I understood correctly, is kind of for you is uh, is relative. It's like yeah. not really difference because it's relative. Points. Yeah, but if you think about the science that I'm talking about and the difference between experimental and historical, even if there is a mix, I think that some some people don't think that, but I think that time make an asymmetry. But this is controversial. And so this is the reason why it makes sense to say I'm here in the actual situation and this is an actualized possibility because I'm in the evolutionary scenario in which time is like that. And development, and this is my point, is interesting because the time can be repeated. Mm -hmm. Even if not fully true that. Is part of the issue that we trans we sort of transparently went from metaphysics to epistemology just now? Yeah, I guess. So. Yeah. Because that seems to me to be part of the disconnect there, right? Like. Yes, I think you're right. But I have a even looking from an epistemological point of view, I don't fully see the distinction. A distinction between what? Sorry. Uh, between between the, uh, the the counterfactual uh, uh, one and the one that is about future like actual actualizability um, in the sense that I not I don't agree that epistemologically as a historical science you can obtain any counterfactual information. I mean you can observe of course what happened, but that is not going to give you the possibilities you want. You can only do this by constructing models about possibilities now of course because you can only test it. Uh, uh, with well, in at least or, or a model or whatever, uh, but, but you think of yourself as being at the end of history and then seeing what would happen. Uh, you cannot like go back and uh, observe um, what would have happened if if uh, if this particular species had uh, had been uh, killed off. Uh, you see my point? Uh, uh, as a pure historical science, you, 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 you cannot do this counterfactual possibilities reasoning. Um, and if you want to get to counterfactuals, I think you need the kind of reasoning that gave you the other point, the, the actualizability thinking. I see, uh, I see the point. Because yeah. you have to intervene at some point to get yeah. counterfactual information. Um, I yeah, I see. I see your point, but um, uh, so the counterfactual reasoning coming from the analysis that I provide for the scenario, bit scenario, in which he really want to argue that evolution is contingent. And uh, so, what happened could have otherwise is not really to making this counterfactual. Even if I, I told you that now, we don't have the possibility to do that also in evolution. So this is the reason why I say that we have a mix of two. Mm -hmm. So in this case, part of your question is answered by the fact that we have a mixed style of reasoning and we can do actually not to have the scenario. And, um, and what, what is the other point concerning the actualization of... Ah, you say, okay, in, a, in evolution I would... It would be necessary to be in that point in order to actualize... And this is the case, for example, nonetheless. But I think as also Stephen Jay Gould, the target for um, contingent evolution. Making counterfactuals is not really the idea to verify the counterfactuals. It's only to argue in favor of the contingent natural evolution. Even if counterfactual in this way, we can be preferred. Yeah, because we really have an actualization here. I mean, this is my point. There's two kind of style of reasonings that can be mixed up, but it's interesting to 
uh, are rather these two ways of reasoning and see what happens if we mix the two. Also concerning the development, we can do a contrafactual reason if we study development as a token. We say, what if, I, 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 I show you here, we had a certain result, but we, if the initial condition had been different, what would the result have been? Also, with, and this is the, probably the, the answer, even if we cannot do that and we have an actualized possibility, this actualized possibility can be explanatory, nonetheless, without testing the contractors. This is, was the point also by John Beatty. And maybe, yeah, this is the, because you are talking about test it, I talk about expla ex explain that it's not necessarily the same all the time. But thank you so much because I think I have to think more careful concerning the, yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Me? Yeah. I have the same point. I think you have the right intuition, but not the right tool to argue for it. So come back to the to the chicken. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. It's worth it. It well. makes sense to talk about. The title of the paper will have to have yeah. chickens in it. So it no. Yeah. yeah. It makes true. sense to see that that ex experimental is that because the space of possibility is so constrained. Yeah. That it's the same yeah. in each case, or almost the same. So that's what you call actualizable, or something like that. Yeah. Because so it's the space of possibilities constrained, and you can build a semantic a possible world or whatever. But when you go to BT, come back to to BT before, because there's a part of BT where you call it radically contingent or something like that, or strongly contingent is that the space of the tree is not fixed. You say that it's so you're idea. not moving in a tree. Yeah. Yeah, that that would be like actual. I, I don't like the, the word you chose, but what you call actualizable, if the tree is there because it's constrained enough. But if the trees change, if the branching is unpredictable or contingent, the, the space of possibility is not constrained enough, that is what you would call not non-actual, not non-actualizable, but not actual or not actualized. Yeah, actualized. I think you have a real distinction there. Because there's if I don't know how the trees of possibility, if I believe the trees of possibility is not fixed enough, I'm doing history. I will not go experimental. I will try to get to, you know, this branch could be explained causally. But if I, I believe that the system is heavily constrained, like development, it makes sense to do experiments and to explore the space because I, I believe it. It's there. It's yeah, yeah. it's 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 constrained. I can't explore it. If I if it's changed all the time, there's no way it makes sense to make experiments. So to, to, to do experiments you have to believe that the space of possibilities is constrained enough. It's maybe more it's not a strong distinction, maybe it's a question of degree, I don't know, but so the, the consequence of what I say is that so you have you you're right. There's two kind of unactualized possibilities, depending on the constraint of the space of possibilities, because you will have different practices to explore yeah. it. Yeah, I think you're right about that, but it's not necessarily counterfactual con versus conditional reasoning. Yeah. It's related to how. What do you think the space of possibility is? Ah, is yeah. Um, so, so, so what? So, uh, what about this scenario? So this is an evolutionary scenario. So I think in evolution there must be two because you you agree with the, this one. Yeah, evolutionary this, scenario. This experiment makes sense if you think it's constrained enough. Ah. You know, and it's maybe a reason to believe that it's more constrained, at least in this specific case, than you thought, because these different islands seem to go similarly. Okay. On the other hand, if one of the lizards become to fly, or something you know more than just adaptation, but something like yeah. innovation, you would say, oh, 
maybe that was not constrained as much as I thought. Or maybe there is also another distinction that we can make. Maybe here we have a scenario in which we are studying evolutionary biology. So I think there is could be a. I think that where we are, where Lossos goes against BT is that BT has a tendency to believe that it's radically contingent. Mm -hmm. And Lossa says that at least some parts yeah, yeah, are yeah, more yeah, constrained. Parts, yeah. I think it's a question of degree between the two. Yeah. But also, I don't know if it could be a point, but maybe here we are an evolutionary study concerning also the future state mm -hmm. of stuff. Is think BT <coughs> focus on macroevolution, so it's only retrospective? Ah, okay. No. So now this could be interesting. It could be a certain, different of practice, yeah. Different practice know. that can give you a different type of ranking process. Because here we can see an open ranking process because yeah, of course could fly a moment. But the retrospective we have a fixed ranking process one. The story happened in that way. This, the work that Pitti and maybe Desjardins are doing now is very interesting because it fits very well for what you said because they are challenging the very premise that you can um, have this scenario. Mm -hmm. So why you <coughs> choose to have this and this instead of other million of possibility, why the branching process itself, why that possibility or that possibility or other possibility. So even if retroactively, they question the scenario. Because why two possibilities, not three or four, so in and if it is uh, can match with <coughs> your question concerning the branching process, the uh, open or close space of possibilities. And I have to think more about that. Maybe it's better to, yes, yeah, true. Because conditional counterfactual is the first intuitive meaning that came to me, but I don't want to stick. I, I would like to go deeper. Maybe this could be an idea sort of with the following now, up. If they believe that the trees is so non-constrained that there's possibly thousands of branches at each thing, I don't know how you will evaluate counterfactuals. You know, it's not constrained enough. You would just say, "Well, <laughs> if I had that, that whatever." So, yeah. so you see that counterfactual reasoning needs some structure to be of the possibility space, or I don't know how to solve a counterfactual or to say a counterfactual is potentially even yeah. potentially true. Well, there's an intermediate level of complexity though, that, you, that you can get to to start to do that, right? Which is you can start to put probabilities on the branches. And Beatty and Desjardins play with that a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you have a weighting function that you can run over your branches, that helps. But on the other hand, what is the dimension of that space? Yeah. If it's, yeah. If it's uh, like a space of genomes, it's thousands of the dimension. How, how to make a distribution probability on that? Thousands of dimensions. But I don't say it's impossible. I don't right. know. It's yeah. it's a it's a challenge. If anything, the, 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 the probability thing makes it worse because then you don't need the only information about the branching, but also about the weighting of the weighting mm. of the branching. It's right? more complicated. Yeah. It's not just the modal structure, but also the probability structure. That's, that's even more constrained in some sense, or more information needed to obtain. Okay, good point. Yeah, so you're talking mostly about, I mean, the terms you're using, honestly, uh, stochasticity and reproducibility. But concerning development, there is huge literature on plasticity and robustness. Yeah. And what's the relationship between those two days? Is it just that when we talk about uh, historical science and contingency, uh, singular events, we will say stochastic or reproducible? 
And when we talk about types, we will say plasticity versus robustness, or there are some other differences? So yeah, thank you for, for the question. This is very debated also in the biology, it's not only a philosophical uh, problem of definition. But uh, in, uh, in the practice you can find uh, this relation very straight, namely the fact that stochasticity enables uh, robustness contraintuitively because stochasticity can uh, can be a very important source of variation. So if we have a perturbing uh, um, environment, so plasticity can be the source of variation that enable the organisms to uh, survive. So it's a robustness, it's an important element in the robustness. Concer what is the, the other character? Okay, plasticity, I don't want to go into plasticity, I would like rather to talk about reproducibility because plasticity is more broader and uh, I think for my stuff is enough to be in a reproducible um, concept because plasticity are usually territory in a different way in which etc etc but for me also in light of the fact I'm working on the physiological level reproducibility is more uh, I think it's, it's my I don't know if it is there a difference between reproducibility and robustness? Reproducibility because and both, robustness. Yes, because both are defined by the fact that you uh, start from different places and then up in. The reproducibility is uh, at another level. We have a robustness uh, processes and uh, we can test the reproducibility by showing that they are, all, all, are not the same kind, I think. It's more methodological. The, the robustness is a feature. Or unless it's a feature that the model possesses when they describe the logical phenomena. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. I have a follow up with your constraint and in the biggest picture the constraint constraint seems natural selection if it means if a uh, a population put in different environment, they have different fitness and uh, different uh, results. <coughs> well, in your de developmental uh, possibility, the constraints more is uh, biological mechanism, structure, anything that constraints are possible variation in the yeah. future. So you are, there are two kinds of possibility to talk about two different phenomena. One is about novelty, one is about Adaption, adaptation. So yes. uh, that's my follow uh, Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah, it's true. But nonetheless, I. So also the branching present then is constrained by something, by natural selection. So it's not all possible, you know. It's not whatever, because nonetheless we have evolutionary constraints that are not the same as developmental constraints. And I would like to reflect more concerning this kind of constraint because if we identify more deeply this constraint, we can think about the very difference concerning these possibilities. Because from an intuitive point of view, it's true that evolution is open and uh, development is closed. But we say something more concerning this. Or all, all. this is my my ambition. That yeah. Thank you. If I could just add. I think the picture of the, the metaphor of the fitness landscape is it interesting is nice. because it pushes us towards a direction to understand these constraints and it's a it's a probably a, it's a metaphor, it's probably makes no sense. But no <laughs> the point is that biologists and cell biology they, they like it this metaphor, but they yeah, use it as a tractor. Almost nobody is able to build one, a real one. Because there's too many dimensions, yeah. and you don't know if there's a minimal, if there's a minimum somewhere there of fitness. Yeah. Because it's, but at least as a metaphor, it makes you think in a certain way. And I think you gave us today elements to think that okay, maybe we should be more careful about this uh, this metaphor because yeah. there's there's the graduate the gradation between you know very highly constrained development and maybe more open evolution. Yeah. Yes. No, I just wanted to add that there are obviously problems with fitness landscape, but 
uh, fitness landscapes, but probably in something yeah. like Wellington's uh, diagrams are less problematic because we can assume that if we focus on some specific aspects, we will reduce the number of dimensions dramatically enough to say that if we choose between three cell types, then there are not so many dimensions. That's why we can draw something like this. Um, okay. Because we're not interested in uh, all the possible mutations, etc., etc., etc. We are only interested in what, uh, for example, BT called an evolution turning points. And if we study the process where we have few of those turning points, which means that uh, this means that we are not in big trouble when we use those kind of uh, spatial order presentations. Yeah, for example, in stem cell study, there is a mathematization in which they do know all the possibility that are possible, and after that, they constrain, they um, build. Um, this is not a metaphor. One that specified that. The Wittgenian landscape is not only a metaphor, it can be mathematized, maybe in this case it works with stem cell in which they know the possibility, they are not kind of unconstrained possibility. But what, what is the connection between that in laboratory and life evolution in the world? Yes. It's, it's not about evolution at this point, it's about development. Okay, no, okay. Development, it's okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I thought you were you were using. No, 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 no. no, 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 no in development, I, I yeah. can understand. It's constraint enough. Ah, okay, okay. So yeah, it's yeah, why yeah, exactly. I think, I think it's so. okay for your chicken. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but it's not okay. Maybe fitness landscape for evolution. Yeah. For evolution. Okay. Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. No, but no, nonetheless, uh, developmental epigenetic landscape in Washington was. Created by what for development, and they never mm -hmm. use for evolution. This is the fitness landscape, mm -hmm. this is another stuff. Mm -hmm. okay. I write. Okay. Sorry, I was confused. Yeah. Um, don't you have similar things in evolution? Sorry? Don't you have similar things in evolution, like these character spaces where they have like certain regions that are populated and different animals? I cannot hear you, I have a problem, <laughs> sorry. So in evolution you also have these character spaces with certain regions that are populated, like the, the shape of modern shells or something. There yes. are certain shapes that are viable. Yeah. It's pretty parallel to the development case, I think. So there is, okay, there is kind of a cell that can... Uh, oh, evolution of a cell is in, in accord with some physical and biological constraints that enable us to have only a specific part of the phase space. This is your point. And this is similar to development, you are saying, you are asking. Yeah, basically, yeah. So you reduce the number of dimensions and you can model it the same way, I think. It's mostly physical constraints, I suppose, just the laws of physics mean that you can only have certain yeah. shapes that are available. Yeah, there is a PhD dissertation uh, which uh, thinks there really go deeper concerning this kind of face space. And, um, and he argues that actually we are not really able to fix what is possible for what is not at the end of the day. This is a big claim of... In evolution or in development? In, in, uh, no, no, in this case in evolution. Okay. And it's interesting, this, I, I don't think it's, I'm able to... And so, uh, thank you so much. Um, yeah, this is a dissertation in which he really analyzed the phase space of the cell, etc., all the models, and... Uh, and it's very convincing concerning the fact actually we don't know what is really possible, so we cannot really constrain all the possibility also in evolution. Yes. And can you do it in development if you don't reduce the dimensions? Sorry? Because can you do it in development if you don't reduce the dimensions? Because obviously if you take the full complexity into account, then you're going to have the same problem, right? I think it's in development we, we sort of abstract away from all the details and we have these certain types that we are finding. But if you're going to look in detail, like historically almost all the chickens are 
slightly different. Uh, to me, it seems like just a different perspective or a different time scale than you know. So, so you're saying that we have, we could have the same problem also in development. This is the point. I don't really see the difference. But the, the but the difference is that we can test it. You can really see the possibility. And I think there is an asymmetry here. It's not really the same because we have a, a mega revolution, we have a historical scale with a lot of the happens, but in development you can really test in the laboratory and developmental process is very different concerning the the magnitude also of the stuff, even if the, from a molecular point of view is a huge uh, stuff, of course. But there is a difference. I think it's not the same kind of problem because we are not talking about ontologically like the same stuff. They are very heterogeneous. Um, yeah. Isn't the difference epistemic, like we can't test it because we also, yes, it's, yes. it's a massive, like yes. it's just a very long time scale. Yeah. But if we have really complex evolutionary simulations, we can test things, right? Yeah. yeah. But the, yeah the, the question of things, novelty, you know, at one point two mm -hmm. things are the same or not. So um, your point uh, is that different chickens are unique, so in certain sense they are not the same. So why a bird and a dinosaur? Yeah. yeah. So that's his point. And you're trying to say, no, no, it's, there's a real difference between very heterogeneous things and none, which I would agree, but uh, it's a fair question. You know? Yeah. I don't know maybe if the type token distinction could help here. Sorry? The type token distinction can help here. Concerning the development, uh, as I said, we can study yeah, the different stages that are common to all or the uh, chicken that if you think, yeah, we the development as histo history and development as a common feature that all the developmental process can have. I don't know if this difference can help here. I have no idea, but thank you so much for the point. Uh, I'm, so I'm, I'm a historian, so like, like Peter, I, I, I bring here my, my own sort of buckets. <laughs> uh, but I was thinking whether you can, so your point is that, that there are different styles of reasoning about possibilities in development and, and, and uh, evolution that sort of map in onto this um, experimental and, and also observational uh, historical and I wonder if you can sort of show that with examples historical examples of scientists so sort of because for example so in both sciences there are observational or historical approaches and also experimental right so maybe there are some debates within those communities about like how should we think about development when we are observing in the microscope how cells move and whether or not when they were able to perhaps you know do genetic manipulation and I, I guess there was a lot of debate so like how should we interpret when we do genetic manipulations are we knock off a gene then what happens I guess I don't know if there were I'm wondering if there were debates um, a lot, like how should we understand what's happening? Uh, also, in evolution, when I don't know, you have a particular case study where you can really do uh, sort of um, see evolution happen in in in, in our lifetime. Are they are they are scientists discussing um, these issues where you can maybe sort of extract some of those implicit ways of reasoning? more like empirical philosophy of science kind of uh, approach? Yes, but I, no, no, it's, it's, it's true. I think that, in, and I try to, 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 to propose also the fact that the situation is more complex concerning the fact that we can have mixed style mm -hmm. of reasoning. But I, my, my work is not about understanding. Uh, it's kind of when you say that uh, there is a debate concerning which way we have to understand this, uh, the manipulation of stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's not my point, because nonetheless, there we are already in experimental science. So for me, it's, uh, it's, uh, 
it's not the content but in a way the style of reasoning if we are standing there concerning the manipulation we are doing experimental science and as experimental science is part of research what uh, could be interesting what is the interesting thing about possibilities this is me it's mm -hmm. not necessary I don't know if I understood you correctly to go really into the, the debate concerning what we can understand, but uh, it's, it's sufficient to me to see the style of reasoning that they use in order to understand the stuff without... It's two different levels, I don't know if, I, yeah, if you see. Yeah, perhaps I... I yeah. I but nonetheless, uh, it's exactly interesting to to really go with example and try to extrapolate which reason in which moment they use because I think yeah, there are more fine grained, it's true. And there are more mixed uh, there are more mixed as we expect. But I think in order to provide this analysis it's necessary to have something in mind. Sure. So this is the reason why I tried to develop this project. Yeah. But I need stronger tools before maybe going mm. down. And this is true that I have to change contractual uh, conditional to something more robust mm -hmm. in order to have a chicken. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, thank you very so much. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I have many. I won't take the smiles. At the beginning of the talk, you discussed the theoretical approach in the net and uh, system biology approach more towards practice, what is possible to produce. And uh, after that, it, this distinction disappeared completely in your talk. So could you... The distinction be ah, between the... Between this theoretical approach of thinking about probability, uh, possibility and more what you can do. That is obviously in the system biology people, they are already... They say what you can do, you can replace an organ by something functionally the same, blah, blah. So they have a, a special kind of reasoning of possibilities. But after that, this distinction disappeared, it seems, in the rest of the talk. So could yeah. you come back to see how yes. the rest of the work could help me yeah. to see how, yeah, yeah, thank you, thank how you it so is much. articulated? So, I mean, so um, the first character here is theoretical speculation. Then, so it's uh, the study of biological possibility from a top-down perspective. And this does not uh, interest me. Okay. I'm more like in practice. Concerning, so we are here. So all the work that I propose, we are here. Concerning the other aspect that we are talking about, namely, it seems to me that you're talking about the the fact that in synthetic biology we can intervene. Yeah, and you start from something. You always start from something and say, oh, if I ch had changed this organ or this molecule of and this... And how can this start so you always fix... Start, you always start about possibly starting from a, a model organism or right. something. So how does it translate in I the chicken? Or? I think it can't be translated in the chicken because the... I think very intuitively and uh, in a in an easy way, but I don't know if this answer. Let's go back to the chicken. So, if you in certain way say, if it's possible to have this molecule and we can test it, okay. And here I think we could make the same. I don't know if I'm doing rhetorics, but. Yeah, it's very similar. The level of the fact that we can uh, both intervene and both uh, repeat the process is kind of saying, um, what if uh, we have this part or other part? What if we have this or the other? It's, it's kind of similar stuff, but for the simple reason that we are in experimental context, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. I don't know if... Uh, because we can say, um, is it possible to, to an end to do that? It's, it's, it's not synthetic but it's uh, a, a, a question concerning the mental possibility that we can test and we can do in this, not in the same way, but in experimental context. I think that, thank you. Okay. So, 
Yeah, I see. Okay, so there's two. There's still two practice, even if you're not interested in the theoretical. So the theoretical, they try to define the space of possibilities. Yeah. And the synthetics, that is also what you call experimental. You start from a part of the space of possibility and you explore. Yeah. You explore. The space and maybe there's some region that you will never reach or cannot, or could not reach yeah. for X, Y reason. Yeah. And this is the biological world to explore the possibility. Okay. And me, I'm trying to uh, explore the way in which this possibility can be conceived. Yes. I have kind of a follow-up question on uh, what just was just introduced by Alexander. Mm -hmm. Is that it seems to me that there is this, I mean it's always not the only difference between Dennett and let's say synthetic biologists, that one of them are interested uh, in just mapping these basic possibilities and the other them are interested in actually exploring the space of possibilities. Yes. But they actually work in two different spaces, no? In the sense that for Dennett the criterion of accessibility will be evolution. And for them, the criterion of accessibility will be something which is manageable to do in the lab. Uh, that's why they can say something like xDNA, which <coughs> probably is absolutely evolutionary and inaccessible because something like DNA basical chemistry is so conserved. But if it's manageable to do in the lab, why not? Or in simulation. Or in simulation. Uh, why I want to introduce this difference is that it seems to me that this distinction you made between the fact that one of is purely theoretical and uh, another is uh, Practice, yeah. practical is actually uh, hinders a bit understanding of uh, or comparison between evolutionary and developmental possibilities because we can imagine developmental biologists who study something which is absolutely uh, practically uh, inaccessible in a sense. I don't know, we found, uh, I don't know, animal that millions of years ago, but we know it's morphology, so we can speculate and speak in, uh, I don't know, in a very counterfactual way about the possible ways of development of something like this, even if we don't have any resources to manipulate, or if we work with some animal for which we have no experimental techniques, so it's uh, unmanageable, etc. But we will <coughs> be working with those kinds of space possibilities, landscapes, Etc., which you described, and I think some of your notions like stochastical development or something like this would be still applied to these, to those cases, even though this will be purely theoretical discussion with no experimental. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, yeah, yeah, this is if we want to go deeper concerning the difference, of course, we can find some something that could be could see could seem weak point. But nonetheless, even if I agree with you that also in experimental science there could be a very theoretical moment, it's true. Nonetheless, the difference that I highlight here is that then in, in, the, in the chapter that we talk about possibility is really out of context, it's pure theoretical and of course, in experimental stuff, we can have this speculation concerning the possibility, but it's not exactly the same. I don't know if you see the point. Because nonetheless, we are in, in biological practice, but then it didn't um, develop the argument from something concerning real science. It's speculation. But it had speculation. I think that the theoretical analysis would be used in experimental, but in the specific context of the research, if you do that without context, for me, is not biological practice. And this is the reason why I made this stick out to me. But you can say, okay, get them to work in this experimental world. Yeah, okay. we could. For an intuitive point of view, yes, but my point is that then is a top-down reflection, and I, uh, this is my, uh, no, my, my dogma. Okay. I'm really on bottom-up stuff, and then it is clearly not in bottom-up. Well, if the top-down was a practice, uh, this is another, yeah, the, the, because of course, in physics you yeah. build, you build face space with 
almost not a lot of constraints. So there's at least a practice of that. Yeah. But I think it's that is part of the discipline. I think it depends really on the discipline. It's not. Uh, so your dogma uh, would change if the biologist was top down. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I follow. Believe. Okay. A small question uh, that is probably not very important, but I was slightly confused by some statements where you say um, it's always the case that uh, this evolves into or develops into that. Uh, it was just uh, the, the zygote into like it was on the bottom of uh, yeah, the slides, yes. uh, and I was a bit confused by the word always here because it is about <laughs> stochastic. Stochasticity. <laughs> Stochasticity. Stochastic processes. And um, uh, it, I mean, of course, the, 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 the individual can die. Uh, um, yeah, each zygote of a species develops into a larva or a juvenile. Yeah, that's right. So, so, so each zygote, no, I mean, they can die, right? So it's not because there's high probability that there is some sort of uh, non-stochastic nature of it. You never lose the stochastic nature. So maybe this is just like no, no, talking okay. imprecisely, but it seems important if you're talking about stochastic stuff that you always keep your language stochastic. But maybe this is just a very unimportant <laughs> remark. So you shouldn't have said that always. No. no it's, each. <laughs> it's not always. It's each. Each is a problem. <laughs> Now, at least it's a, a, a phrase um, Be careful with your, your quantifier, if there's a logician in the <laughs> <laughs> No, no, it's not, it's not about being big, it's about whether you ever lose the stochastic nature. Like, if you want to go through the... So, you say, oh, it's like, like, oh, it always becomes a chicken. Well, no, it, it usually becomes a chicken, but things might go wrong, right? Yeah, but the, the wrong part of the development that could be, I, I, I don't used to call it stochasticity. It's a, it's a, um, it's something that go wrong, even if it's of course stochastic. Here, here is each zygote, maybe each zygote without any problem. This is the assumption. Go ahead and have a germinal of all species. And the stochastic that we play there can give us the germinal of that species. If you are saying that there are some contingency that can lead the zygote to die, of course, but this is out of our interest that I'm interested in the, the the development that works. What do you mean it's out? It's not in the model? It's what do you mean by out? There is an, another another um, ob, uh, objection that I already received. Um, but this is, for me is I don't know, maybe it's uh, This is only true to argue for the reproducibility. So if you, so the reproducibility means that if we have this, we will have that. Of course, sometimes if the genome doesn't work, the epigenetic doesn't work, we don't have that. But in that case, we don't have the development. We have kind of abortion. This is each zygote without problem give us the say the a ki uh, kitchen chicken no kitchen. I am very surprised by that. Um, it seems to me that like repro reproducibility is an issue in statistical sciences where you always have like percentages. It's it, because it's the fact that it's reproducible uh, from a practice point of view doesn't have to mean that it's always going to give you the result you expect. It's, it's enough that you get the same kind of our probabilities from this research and from the others, uh, right? If, if the the, the non-reproducibility of many uh, 
um, studies in, in, in human science and social sciences is not about that we don't have like absolute uh, uh, absolution, I mean absolute cases where it's um, this always happens and that happens. The problem is that we just cannot get similar sort of probabilities even in, in many social sciences when we reproduce an experiment. You see the point? Like, it, I don't see how reproducibility is associated to this sort of always nature, the, the non-stochastic nature. As you, and I'm happy I asked the question because it seems not to be a, a mistake. It, it's intentional that you like get rid of the stochastic. So guess this. That, I'm not good. over here because <laughs> you, you introduce this normality or this healthiness, which is a little bit spooky. But if you do that, that's a way to get rid of st stochastic aspects, right? But um, I don't <laughs> well, thank you for that. So I think we are thinking about two different grain of thinking because I think you are more like statistics you are in the head you are thinking about statistics and if you roll out you cannot say it's so always the same you have the responsibility but sometimes go wrong and super and this you call this stochasticity. Okay? Yeah. This is statistics. I talk about bi biological processes, two, three, today, three <coughs> biological processes. And these processes are reproducible. Okay? But each, maybe this is the answer, each is not, does not refer to statistics. It's really only to, to, to fix the, 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 the concept about this irreproducibility. So if we have this, I will have this. Of course, for a statistical point of view, I can have some abortion, okay? I don't want to say normal, normal because I don't want to enter in the ethical stuff, but uh, I, the idea is this. The other part of the answer is that I think we are thinking about stochasticity in different way. Because stochasticity uh, pop up from the statistical analysis, and my stochasticity is referring to the description of some molecular process that is the, are described in biological practice as stochastic. That not necessarily mean that we are talking about statistics. Even if we can have models, statistical model in order to study molecular processes. At least I think there are two. Uh, yeah. I see that it's like deterministic chaos or something. It's just no reason but you have to guess this. I mean, maybe I'm going too far. No, no, no. If it's a small it's a follow up, yeah, yeah, it's a follow up. It's, it's, it's that the, in social science we have the same, okay? We have a model, probabilistic model, blah, 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 and there's always you know, external variables, non measured, uh, who knows what happened. And we would, it's all statistic and it's all stochastic. So, but we will say, your model is studying these three processes that are probabilistic. Yes. And of course, there could be variables outside the model that are still probabilistic but non measure outside the model. And we would say, we won't say it's not stochastic or stochastic. We would say they are outside the model. And if the model failed, <laughs> we have to integrate other variables, but there's no deterministic blah blah blah. Yeah, that, yes. that, that you're engaging yourself on a lot of metaphysics now <coughs> that I think you're quite not happy with in the rest of your talk. So maybe it's all it's not always it should be inside the model and outside the model. So when the chicken die outside the model. The variables outside. Yeah, maybe, yeah, we can frame, yeah. When the, mm. your only model, uh, model probability when the chicken survives, and it's a chicken, okay, it's not like a, yeah, maybe. a monster coming out of development. 
would it be more appropriate for your distinction? Yeah. To answer a uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe it's the, it's the, check. the interest for me is studying the development when we have chicken. Yeah. And then the rapid process when we have a chicken. After that, we can have all the situation we have in which we don't have a chicken is out of interest of the of the talk. So it's yeah, maybe it's just analytical truth or something. You just ignore it like from the start. You, you presuppose that you. But have I'm not in your, in your so yet, obviously because you have a chicken. But it depends on the epistemic uh, interest of the researcher. If I'm testing a staff and I'm interested in, in that aspect, it's, it's, a, it's a practice to try to, to say, okay, this is not what interesting us, because otherwise we cannot study biology, because it's a mess, it's a huge mess. So we have, of course, we need, of course, to, um, to say, okay, this is not our interest now, because otherwise we cannot... Uh, uh, I don't see the problem, but I, I understood your, your point. But for me, it's very, very bizarre, this, uh, this, this objection. But I'm just confused, confused by the word reproducible, which I associate with, with experimentation, which gives you probabilities and, and never gives you this sort of certainty of... Yeah, but, but, but from a more informal way, if we think about, okay, development is reproducible, it's not problematic. If you would like to frame this in the statistical meaning, etc., etc., yes, but if this is a, a tool concerning possibilities and not even uh, the study of possibility in a formal way, it's more like, yeah, an epistemological work. So, I, for me, it's enough some time to use concepts that are intuitively clear for the audience and for the research that are pursuing this experiment. This is enough for us. After that, we can go the fine brain and if we need to care <coughs> if we would like to see the abortion, the text, etc. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, it's fifty-eight. I'll do it anyway. I spent fifty-eight minutes trying to come up trying to formulate this question and it still sucks. <laughs> not out of time. I so now I'm just gonna ask it anyway. Um this will look what I've been trying to, 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 to wrestle with is the importance of time to the argument. The uh, important? Of time. The important uh, yeah. Um, because a lot of lifting is being done, and this is, I mean, this is where the whole historical exper experimental analogy is. There's a lot of, of lifting being done by time here. And I guess, how to put it, I'm not accustomed to thinking about time when I think about modality. Mm. And so I'm trying to figure out how to do that. And partly, again, I think part of this is kind of a metaphysics ex epistemology thing. And so in some sense, Part of, partly it's that this is kind of a modal epistemology project rather than a modal metaphysics project, and I don't know much modal epistemology. Um, but also I think there's, and I mean, you may have, you may have sort of, in, I, think you, I think you did, I think, you, I think this is largely inherited from the practice and from the examples that if, If the authors you're reading aren't clear about whether what they're doing is metaphysical or epistemic, then that's also that's that's kind of trickling into into your analysis. Like when I see what Wang is doing, that feels atemporal to me, right? And so that feels like drawing out the contours of something pretty profoundly metaphysics flavored. Whereas later on, when you're presenting stuff as like, look, you know, here we are in the laboratory, we can start a bunch of developmental experiments, or here we can be Jonathan Losos and we can go poke losers with a stick, um, and then we can compare what happens across. That's more epistemic and also more temporal, and I can't figure out why 
the two things together make me uncomfortable, but the two things together make me uncomfortable. I don't know why. And I've spent now uh, 61 minutes trying to figure out what it is about combining those two things that makes me uncomfortable. And I don't know what it is, so this is a garbage question. Um, but I guess what I'm saying is like, if I can figure it out, maybe I'll, I will tell you. Um, and maybe, I don't know, maybe there's something here to clarify. I can't figure out what it is. But there's something about the fact that, that yeah, there feel, it seems to me that there's a, there's, a, there's a moving back and forth here. And for me, the kind of emblematic bit of the moving back and forth is the importance of time to the argument somehow. But I can't figure out how to make that into a clearer question then, than that. Uh, OK, so I yeah, yeah. But, uh, uh, so the second, I understood the scenario. But the first, uh, without time, is which part of the presentation? Uh, the Huang's example, the, the Waddington landscape derived from the stem cell research, from ah. the Huang paper, the figures. Ah, yes, OK. Yeah, this, like this, this feels very atemporal to me, right? This feels like I took the genome, I built the GRNs, I did some manipulations, like I got to the metaphysical structure of the face bits, mm. right? And so this, like this, uh, you know, this feels kind of like the classic way that I feel like I'm used to thinking about this stuff when I have my, my metaphysics hat on. But then I have a hard time squaring that with the, the more experimentally focused, more temporal, more epistemic stuff that you get to later. And I don't know why I find that difficult, but I find it hard to like get those two things together. Maybe it will make more sense after a St. Bernard's 12. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, no, I see, I see the, the point. I don't know. <laughs> cioè, no, the... This isn't, like, this isn't an objection, right? I actually no, 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 This is like, point. this is like, a, I don't know why, I don't know why I'm, I don't know why this but, is but causing me trouble. Just to, just to probe your... Discomfort. 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 Yeah. Are you more comfortable with the notion of possible state, which is this, or possible process, mm. which is more... Yeah, maybe, so maybe that's part of the slippage. Maybe you yeah. prefer possible process and not the notion of possible state. I actually like states. This feels like states. Yeah, I exactly. like state spaces. So maybe Why that's... are you uncomfortable? <laughs> no, this is the bit that I love. This is the part I like. Oh, okay. Or this is the part I'm used to. This this figure feels comfortable. Yeah. It's well, and, and it's not that it's not that I'm uncomfortable a priori with the experimental no, idea. No, no. It's no, no trying to figure out how they're both talking about the same thing that makes me... But that, that's not different. Me. Possible process or possible thing is different. Maybe that's part of it. It's a I different think way to think about, about that. possibility. That might, be, that might be an aspect of, what, of why I find it difficult that maybe there's both going on here. I don't know. Uh, because, yeah, maybe, yeah, face space uh, is the... Um, not the assumption, but the face space that we recognize concerning the developmental process. And then we have the, the path, the specific path that right. which of these. So this face space, yeah, it's a temporary, it's more like a theoretical, theoretical uh, elaboration of development of face space. And this is the the play that inside of this face space can happen and mm. this is dynamical with time. The other is more like, okay, we have this scenario. We have to play in the, that scenario. Face space process, yeah, maybe it's this there. But you see, a, a tree is more closer to possible process than right. not, not, not necessary. A, a fitness landscape is clearly space, state space. And, and if I remember correctly, I think your question also relates to what was said before that that sort of Waddington stuff was for development, and that was to model epigenetics, and that it fits awkwardly with the evolutionary aspect because the evolution has a take time dimension. And if I remember correctly, Waddington's model, the height of the valley was was like 
he imagined that something like the epigenetics is, is setting up that gradient, that heightness, and so it was really, uh, yeah, something about space shape, yeah. and the, the shape, but it was not so much about... The value yeah, doesn't matter. The, it's not about the path yeah. of the ball, ball so much as to, as to yeah, epigenetics sort of controlling how high mm. things are. So I, yeah, I don't know if, if, if yeah. but it's it's six after four, so we should let Marco not have to answer <laughs> questions. Yeah, we'll, we'll, so. we'll ask him more questions. <laughs> we'll Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.